Welcome to the driver's press conference ahead of the 2020 British Grand Prix. Can you see any weaknesses in the car? Um, when was the last time we drove? Like what, what happens there? Um, are there weaknesses? Hmm. <laughs> it's pretty strong. It's pretty strong, yeah. I think in Austria there were some corners with windows like Will of Warp. Normally it seemed like Red Bull is quite good in some slow speed corners. Where three wheeling, yeah, we yeah. three wheel a lot, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but um, no, at the moment, not off the top of my head, there's any major issues. But it definitely can be better. Yeah, we're working towards it. Yeah. What about this weekend at Silverstone? Should be pretty strong here. There's no warp in the track here. It's pretty flat, very smooth. So the car should be should be beautiful here, generally. It's been okay. strong here for the past few years. Yeah. Well, Lewis, on the subject of the British Grand Prix, it's your home race. What makes it special? What do you most look forward to this weekend? Seeing the fans. So uh, the, there's a, it felt very odd driving up here because normally you're aware of that. You, you know, you, you know when you get there, that's what you're going to be. Um, you, you, you're going to notice first. And not seeing anybody in the grandstands is going to be odd. We drove here in, um, I think it's Feb, or not Feb. Uh, well, anyway, before the first race. And um, we arrived here, and it's like that day that we were, we were here. You know, it was crowd was there was no crowd here, obviously, and. And when you drive around these corners, there, there's a, not a, a split second where you get to see the crowd in the, um, beyond the corner. And you're not going to see that now, and not going to see any flags. And so it's definitely going to be a lonely weekend on this track without their energy. OK, thanks. Let's go to the video conference now and to Craig Slater at Sky Sports News. Craig. Yes, it's a, a question for Lewis. Um, Roman Grosjean told us today, Lewis, that after a conversation with you, he now realizes he was wrong to argue that the pre-race anti-racism ceremonies shouldn't continue. How impressed are you with him that he's come out and said that publicly? And does this represent progress to you? I, I mean, I wasn't aware of that, but um, I was already impressed with our conversation that we'd had afterwards and his approach. Um, to our conversation. Um, he originally reached out to me to, to talk um, after the last race. And uh, so I gave him a call and we had this great conversation. Um, and, you know, I think ultimately it was quite informative for the both of us and we, we learned that um, we're actually, we have a lot, you know, the fact is we have more in common than we perhaps think. And, um, you know, he's, he's clearly a caring person. so. Um, it was. I mean, to hear that he said that is, it's not easy. Firstly, to for anybody to admit, you know, that um, we're wrong, and that's that's a great first step. But the fact is, you know, when we got off the phone, I knew that we're united, and we're going to be working towards the same common goal. So I'm really, really appreciative to to Roman, um, and that's really what it it's going to take all of us to do. You know, to really kind of open up our minds, don't put up our barriers up, don't, don't get, be defensive, um, be open-minded and, and acknowledging that there is an issue is obviously uh, sometimes the first step, and then how can we work towards making it better? You mentioned about the start in Austria and how you got distracted by some lights on the dashboard. Can you explain what they were for and if you've made any changes this weekend to avoid repeat problems? Yeah, we had a pretty pretty good analysis, obviously, from from the start, um, as we always always do. But now, even more regarding that, and it, it was simply the rev lights on the dash, and um, yeah, we've made changes so it doesn't happen again. So I don't get that kind of distraction at the race start that could lead to a mistake like that. So changes has been made not to for that to happen again. Mercedes pace has been described by another team as borderline outrageous because it's so good. Do you think this team has the potential to win every race this season? 
And what would such an achievement mean for Mercedes as one of the few records it's yet taken? I, I mean, I can't predict what's going to happen moving forward. Uh, I think ultimately our goal as, as a team is always to, to, to win every race. Um, that's what we set out to do every year. Um, but you're constantly faced with new challenges, as Valtteri just mentioned, the, the small things that can make a, a nuanced difference through, through a weekend. So, um, and we have to anticipate that the others are, you know, if you look at Red Bull in the previous years, they get stronger and stronger through a season and usually close up the gap. Um, we do, you know, Ferrari, I'm sure, have got some big improvements to make on the power unit, I'm sure. Hopefully they'll see some of that this year. And so we definitely couldn't guess that we're going to win every single one, but that's what we're working towards. Since you arrived at Mercedes, this is the first time the, steam, the team starts the year so far ahead of the opposition. In what ways does this change your approach to fighting with Lewis? Will you push for different strategies or play more of the psychological side than in previous years? It honestly, it doesn't change anything, even though we've started as a team really strongly the, the season. Um, it's still, there's always unknowns how the season develops. And like Lewis said, there can be always other teams challenging us. Um, and yes, in the end, the last years for me being in the team, it's been Lewis that has won the title. So I know that, you know, <laughs> I need to beat Lewis if I want to be, be the world champion and um, everyone else as well. But it's only in favor for us as a team that we have the advantage. So. It's not going to change anything, and if it needs a different approach, you know, mentally, or um, you know, there's always questioning about mental games, etc. I just want to focus all the energy I have to driving, and I want to be at my peak performance, and I want to be earning the good results by by hard work and and being at my best uh, mentally and physically. So I'm not going to waste energy into. Uh, anything else than my performance, really. So, um, and I believe that's the that's the way to go. And um, also for for us as a team, if we want to keep um, having this advantage that we have at the moment, uh, we have to work together. And I think at the moment, me and Lewis, we are both pushing each other really well um, to new limits all the time, non-stop. So that's only a positive thing. And. And he definitely is pushing me to my, my limits, and uh, I keep discovering more about m myself and my driving. So that's a good thing. So my plan is just full gas, try to be at my best, and I really hope that's going to be enough for the title. Um, so that's it. It's quite simple in the end. You've always emphasized how important your team has been in your career, but could you describe how your relationship is with Toto, how it's developed, and how important it has been to your success? Yeah, it's been um, it's been a relationship that's that's uh, has its own complexities, but has grown so much over the time that we've been working together. Obviously, it's nearly eight years. I think it was it's the eighth year, and um, I think it's just gone from strength to strength as we we learn more about each other. As we, um, you know, I think in relationships or friendships, you. As you get to learn, know about each other, hopefully your barriers start to come down a little bit and you open up more to each other. And I think um, I, I see Toto as a friend and I'm very, very, but you know, obviously he's my boss at the same time. But he's been very fair and a great leader within our team. And I think, you know, the results that we're achieving are, you know, a huge amount of that is down to his leadership. And um, I think. There are so many people in this team, obviously, and we're all a part of the same ch a chain. Um, we're all, all these different chinks in the chain. But the philosophy, for example, that he hands down, stems down from, from you know, his drive. And, um, you know, he's a real racer at, at, at heart. He used to race. And he, uh, you can see from all those videos, that there's funny memes when he's banging on the table, because he's, like all of us, hates losing and, um, you know, is passionate about this. And so, you know, yeah, I'm grateful to continue to work with him. 
Thanks, Lewis. Valtteri, can we throw that question to you and just ask how your relationship has evolved with Toto over the last four years? For sure, it has evolved. I've known Toto since 2008, um, and he's been a big help uh, in my early career as well. So, and uh, for quite some time he's been <laughs> the boss. But uh, yeah, it's we have also really good good friendship. Um, we know each other really well. We can have really open discussions, and he can be sometimes very obviously critical, but that's what he does to the people that he actually cares and wants to perform. So um, and that's a good thing. But he's very honest. Honest uh, when we speak. Sometimes if you speak about contract numbers or something, something like that can be a pain in the ass. But that's normal. That's his job <laughs> to be difficult in that. But uh, but it's all all good fun and. Uh, but he's doing amazing work for, for the team and I think a big part of the success team is having is also thank, thanks to Toto. Thanks, Valtteri. Thanks to Lewis as well. That's all we've got time for. All that's left to be said is good luck this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Silverstone to the driver's press conference. And as you can see, we have Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc with us now. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to see you. Ferrari say they aren't targeting race wins until 2022 at the earliest. Uh, how do you feel about that situation and is there potential frustration? Uh, no, there's no frustration. I think it's, uh, we need to be honest in uh, tough times and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not easy. Uh, it will require quite a lot of work to get back to where we want to be. But at the moment we are, we are just not where, where we would like to be. So. Uh, a lot of work ahead, no, no frustration, just uh, uh, motivation, motivated to try and, and, and do things better and to work in, uh, in the best ways possible to, to see the, the um, how do you say that, the, the improvement. Would you say that you can be happy now that your contract has not been extended? Um, well, I think, uh, I don't know what to answer, to be honest. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, I, obviously I feel for, for the team because uh, I've been uh, a part, and I still am, and I, until the end of this year, a part of this team, and uh, um, everybody is extremely uh, committed and working very hard um, to, uh, you know, make Ferrari win. Obviously, uh, there are reasons why that didn't happen in the past. I think we, we had good years, we had not so good years, um, but uh, in terms of passion and dedication, I think... Uh, there's no, no doubt. So actually, I, I think uh, you know I, I feel for the team. Obviously, it's a tough year this year that we uh, we are going through. Um, I think uh, I have had the experience in the past where maybe years were not so good. I think for Charles it's probably a bit different because uh, for him it's only been up, and now it's the first sort of down again from from last year. But on the other hand, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, as he mentioned, obviously he's motivated to to go through and um, in this regard I wish the team all the best. Now for me obviously uh, after this year it's a bit uh, irrelevant um, and uh, I will see where I end up. When can we expect some news about your future? I have no answer. Um, I, I, I would give you an answer if I really knew but uh, at the moment I don't and I think uh, it's probably realistic to be patient and wait a little bit. Um, that could be a couple of weeks. That could be longer than that. I think, uh, yeah. Again, time will time will tell. As I as I met, nothing has changed to what I mentioned. Uh, I think in the last three weeks or the prior uh, three races, I'm not in a rush. I want to make make sure that I make the right decision for myself, and then take it from there. Would you consider stopping F1 for one year and coming back in 2022? Um, well, I think I've, I've made it quite clear again uh, in the last events that, uh, you know, given the right, uh, right package, etc., that I have uh, a lot more to give. I feel, uh, you know, physically driving and so on that, uh, uh, you know, I'm no worse than I've been um, in the years I've been in, in Formula One before. So uh, I think, uh, you know, I feel very good and uh, there's a lot to, to give. So, as I said, it depends really on what the options are and looking for the future obviously there's the big rule change in 22 which might be very exciting or might not be i think we we don't know sitting here now 
Um, I think you always hope for the better, and that's, uh, you know, as a fan of the sport, I hope so too. Whether I'll be there or not, I don't know. <laughs> How challenging do you expect these two races at Silverstone to be, given it's a circuit that on paper exaggerates the weaknesses of Ferrari's package? Charles, can we start with you? Uh, I think we expect two quite difficult weekends uh, on paper, though. So, uh, yeah, I always uh, try and like to be optimistic. Uh, so I'll have the same mindset going into the weekend. But realistically, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty difficult. Thanks, Sean. Seb, your thoughts? Yeah, it's probably a right way to look at it. Uh, I think uh, on paper is not the track where we should be should be strongest with the current uh, package that we have. But then. We are here to race. I think uh, I always look forward to be on the grid and uh, and see what we can do. You know, there's always decisions that need to be taken during the race, whether it's strategy and so on. It doesn't look like rain for this weekend, but maybe you never know. We are in the UK, so you know it's the it's probably where rain was <laughs> born. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we we'll, we'll see. Anything can come up. Um, so uh, I guess we are the underdog, but uh, maybe we can still still have a good good fight. How are you getting on adapting this car to your driving style? Um, well, uh, I think every car and every year it's different and you need to adapt a little bit your driving style. So it's, uh, it's no different than all the other seasons. Uh, um, yeah, the first races in Austria, I, I felt quite good with the car. I think in Hungary, I, I did a mistake with the uh, with the way I wanted the the car for qualifying, but I think it was actually uh, okay for the for the race. But uh, but yeah, I mean at the end, looking back, you always want to change his few, change few things to 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 get better. But uh, overall, I had no 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 not many problems adapting to it. Thanks, Sean. Sebastian, coming to you. Uh, a top seven finish this weekend will see you reach 3,000 career points. Does that milestone mean anything to you? And have you been paid by the point? It doesn't mean anything to me. Maybe, um, I don't know. When I was uh, Charles' age, it meant a lot, this type of numbers, numbers thing. But now, less so, I think. Uh, you know, the, 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 the statistics that really matter, I think, are wins and championships. Um, the second question was, do I get, did I get, did I get po paid by point for all of those potential 3,000, you mean? Uh, some of those, yes. Uh, others, not. Uh, so, yeah. Well, good luck getting some more this weekend. To both of you, gentlemen, that's all we've got time for. Thanks for your time, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the driver's press conference, where, as you can see, we're joined now by Red Bull's Max Verstappen and Alex Albon. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. Alex, can we start with you? It's Silverstone. It's the British Grand Prix. Uh, what is the highlight for you of your home race weekend? Oof. Um, I see there's two. Firstly, it's the circuit itself. Um, I think it's one of the driver's favorites. Uh, fast. A lot of G-force, a track where you can feel what a Formula 1 car feels like. Um, so I think every driver loves coming here, um, but also the fans. Obviously, that is a little bit different this weekend, um, but uh, normally the fans do make this, this circuit uh, pretty special as well. Thank you. And Max, this is a significant race for you because you equal your father's 106 Formula One starts this weekend. Uh, just wondering how that news, <laughs> how that news has been received. That. <laughs> How's that news been received at home? I think my dad really, really doesn't care, <laughs> and I also don't care. So uh, no, but it's good. It's better than zero starts. So uh, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's. Uh, but well done. Well, stat man. Um, <laughs> Red Bull left the last race in Hungary chasing answers for what Christian Horner said were aero anomalies. What has the team found, and what has been done to improve things for this weekend? Max, can we start with you? Well, I think um, we are still learning. Uh, we're bringing a lot of new parts to the car, different parts, um, yeah, to see what works, what doesn't, where we can still improve. I mean, this is, of course, not uh, from one week to the other, it's not going to be solved. Uh, you need a bit more time for that. But um, yeah, we are working on it. And uh, we'll just uh, find out by trying it on track as well, you know, if uh, we're heading into the, the right direction. Thanks, Max. Alex, your thoughts? 
Yeah, I mean, it makes pretty much answer the question. Um, obviously, FP1, FP2 will will be testing out some things, trying to uh, understand the car a little bit better. And um, I'm sure we, as Max said, it won't happen straight away, but we'll we'll uncover the un or discover the car a bit more each time we go out. And uh, I'm sure we're going to get there. It's just a matter of when. Well. I mean, last year we came here, we thought, OK, we're going to get smashed, and we are within two tenths in qualifying, you know, so it, it, it can depend on, on a lot of things. I mean, for sure, they are the dominant team, and they will be very fast. So, <laughs> I mean, it can be from, I don't know, two tenths to a second to, uh, you, you don't know. You really don't know. I hope it's not going to be a second. I hope not. But uh, <laughs> I hope to be within half a second. That would be good, I think. OK, thanks. Alex? I mean, yeah, uh, pretty much what Max says. I think uh, on paper, the Mercs have been pretty quick, especially in the high speed this year. So when you look at this circuit, it is a high speed circuit. So um, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll keep optimistic and we'll, we'll focus on ourselves. And um, I mean, we're not thinking about the gaps so much to Mercedes, we're more focused on our own performance. What prompted the decision for you to change race engineers? What was the issue with the previous one? And what are you hoping Simon Rennie can bring to you? OK, well, firstly, there, there is no issue with, with, with his name is Mike, um, previous engineer. Um, obviously, right now, um, the car is tricky to drive. Um, and I think as a, well, the team's choice was that uh, we need some experience. Um, and Simon brings that. He's, he's been in, in Formula One for a very long time now. And with that being said, Obviously, he he understands Formula One, and he he will hopefully just you know point us in the right direction, and and um, yeah. How much contact have you had with him since the Hungarian Grand Prix? With Simon. Simon, um, yeah, quite a lot. It's I've already worked with Simon beforehand. Um, we we've done a test in Barcelona last year, so also Simon's in charge of a lot of the sim duties that we do back at uh, Milton Keynes. So. Um, I see him a fair bit. Is Red Bull situation now even more frustrating for you, knowing that the chassis freeze means nothing major can change until at least 2022? Well, I, I, uh, I, my intention is well, I go into a weekend where I always try to do the best I can. Um, of course, I would like to, uh, to come to the weekend and know that you're going to you know, uh, fight for victories every weekend, but at the moment that is not the case. We, we just try to learn and try to improve. And um, well, hopefully towards the end of the year or next year, you know, we can be in that position again. Of course, it's not going to be easy. Uh, you know, uh, they work very hard at Mercedes as well. Uh, but if we can make it difficult for them, um, you know, that would be re really nice. But it's not that I'm going to sit here frustrated and be angry about it all. I mean, that, that doesn't mean that sometimes I, I uh, I, I get a bit um, upset or whatever, but that's at the end of the day because I want to win and I want to improve. And I think everybody in the team has that. You know, we all want to win. And I think it's good, you know, that we are pushing each other uh, hard. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's nothing negative. Because if I would just sit here and like, oh, I don't care, you know, I just walk up to the track, I do my, uh, my job and go back home, I think that would be the wrong attitude. Is there a particular type of corner where the car is struggling more than others? A lot of the spins you've had have been at lower speed turns. Alex, can we start with you? Mm, no, I wouldn't say so. I think, um, yeah, there's, there's not one area. It's just um, trying to get it a bit more consistent through different speed ranges um, and through the corner. So, so, yeah. Max? No, I don't, yeah. I agree with Alex. I think it, it can be anywhere where you, of course, can improve the car as well. Um, I think also low speed, once it goes, it's just a bit more difficult to correct. Uh, but um, yeah, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll keep working on it. All right, that's all we've got time for. Guys, thanks very much for your time and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Welcome back to Silverstone and the driver's press conference where, as you can see, we're joined now by McLaren's Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. Welcome, guys. Good to see you both. Lando, let's start with you. British Grand Prix, home race. Uh, how are you feeling coming into this one? And what's your favorite thing about racing at home? Um, I'm feeling very good uh, coming to this weekend. I think um, it's my home race, uh, you know, 
traveled up this morning. Um, and it's nice you know, not having to fly away or, or doing anything like that. So it makes it much easier from that sense. Um, but uh, I guess the thing which is the, the real thing I was looking forward to is, is seeing the fans here. Um, obviously they're not, but um, that's the thing which makes it so exciting of, of racing at home. Apart from that, it's, it's, um, it's not too much else apart from the fact it's very close to, to home. And um, the second fact of it being uh, an awesome track to race and, and to drive on. So, um, you know, ever since I've, I started driving here back in, would have been like 2014 or something, 2013 since Ginetta, um, it's always been a, a track I love doing. So every year I come back here in a different different car, a different category, and um, it's always been awesome. Was that race in the Ginetta your first time at Silverstone or was it further back? Um, no, my first time was back in the day. <laughs> Um, I don't know when, it must have been 2011, 2012 or something. I came just for a Friday, I think pro probably before a karting race on the weekend. Um, and we just came on a Friday uh, just to watch, I was in the grandstand somewhere. Um, that's the only race I've ever gone to watch in Formula One or anything, or well, not even a race, my only day I've, I went to see Formula One, um, apart from actually racing or being on the package of Formula One, so it was cool. Um, but uh, that's as far back as my memory will take me. And Lando, just before we move on, you've got a new helmet design this weekend. Can you just tell us the story behind that? Yeah, uh, yeah so I, I'm a big fan of changing things up on my helmet and um, expressing myself and uh, just creating cool things. Um, so my, um, my decision for the, well, it was meant to be obviously one race in Silverstone was to to give it up to the fans, let the fans um, create uh, some awesome ideas, some awesome designs, um, and let them choose you know, what, I, what, what I would race at on my home Grand Prix. And uh, um, Eva was uh, the winner, six years old, um, who uh, came up with a very original design, um, one that uh, really brought me back to when I was you know, five, six, seven, growing up, creating all of my own designs, my own helmets, um, you know, with just a normal colouring pencils, pens and, and so on, nothing to do with Photoshop or, or anything like that. Um, so it just brought back some, some cool memories and uh, I uh, announced that she was the winner today. So um, just something different, you know, something cool. Um, and it seems to be going down pretty good. So I'm, I'm very happy with what I did. Thanks, Lando. And Carlos, coming to you, it's not your home Grand Prix, obviously, but you spent a lot of time at Silverstone uh, in your career. Uh, just your thoughts about coming here and, and also what you think you need from the car to be quick. Yeah, it's it's a bit of my home Grand Prix also. I mean, I live uh, an hour away from here, very near walking also. So it's One hour? You drive quick, huh? Yeah, quicker than you. <laughs> but not over the speed limit. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it feels a uh, home Grand Prix also, a great home Grand Prix for the team. Uh, McLaren, I think with the history the team has here. It's, it's great to be here. Probably it was one of the Grand Prix I enjoyed the most last year because of the fans. Uh, being a McLaren driver last year and getting to live that experience here was very, very special. So we are definitely going to miss the fans this year a lot. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm happy to say we'll have three consecutive home Grand Prix, no? England, England, Spain. So how many drivers can say that? It's Carlos, how much contact have you had with people from Ferrari, the technicians? The technicians, nothing, very, very little. Um, uh, the typical things you need to sort out for the future. Now that the regulations are going to be very fixed into next year, there's obviously little things that we need to sort out, um, but contact it has been minimal. And uh, with the management, I've obviously negotiated a contract and all that, but uh, yeah, I've let them know that my intention is still to go and live nearby or 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 around the factory like i was in mclaren just to to brief them a bit on what my plans are but um apart from that and a contract not much more moto3 rider celestino vietti tried to repeat your champagne bottle trick in Jerez last weekend and ended up smashing the bottle cutting open his hand and needing stitches where did you manage to perfect your technique and what advice would you give to anyone else trying to copy you? <laughs> um, it was 22 stitches, right? Do you know the number? I think it was 22 stitches. 22. So, or, I don't know. Even one stitch. He obviously made a, big, a bit of a mess of it. Um, 
But I don't know. I, the only thing I saw is that they have Prosecco bottles. So I don't know if that ha plays any difference in it. In the pressure. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so. yeah, I don't know. That's the only thing I can really blame it on. Um, I, I don't know. I've never broken a bottle in, in all of the times I've done it. And I've done some fairly aggressive ones. Um, and I know a couple of other people uh, who have done some aggressive ones too, um, which is jumping from the podium onto the step below and then smashing the bottle, um, but not actually smashing it itself. So, um, yeah, the only thing I can really say is maybe practice more, maybe with champagne. Um, apart from that, I think he just got very unlucky and uh, I wish him the best in his recovery. <laughs> Welcome back to the driver's press conference at Silverstone, where, as you can see, we're now joined by Renault's Daniel Ricciardo and Esteban Ocon. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. Uh, I remember it all very vividly in my head. You know, it was, I got a call, I think, uh, about a week before the race. And uh, then I was, you know, I was here in the paddock on the Wednesday and trying to, I think I did a seat fit and running around trying to meet you know, this team who I, who I really knew nothing about, you know, with, with HRT and trying to quickly form, you know, relationships. Uh, and then it was, uh, I don't know, I was on the driver's parade on Sunday and there was a few Australian flags, but I think they were for Mark Webber. And <laughs> it was, uh, I don't know, I remember the lights went out for the race. I had a, I think I had a good start, but I was, obviously I was at the back and I don't know, it was just a crazy race, a crazy uh, crazy weekend, not necessarily race, but crazy weekend. I think I was still, honestly, I was still a bit uh, probably overwhelmed and shocked, you know, to be there on such short notice. And I was still a little bit, um, you know, blurry eyed, but uh, it was nice to get that one done. And yeah, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like that long ago, but I look at photos and yeah, I, I look I look different. I guess I feel I feel different now. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Um, on the subject of Silverstone, Esteban, you haven't raced here for a couple of years. Is this the sort of place, the high-speed sweeps of Silverstone, that you really miss when you're sat on the sidelines? Yeah, definitely. And I think with those new cars, it's going to be uh, extremely quick. You know, Silverstone, each year you, you go, um, it's just going faster and faster, and there are more and more corners that are flat out. and. I'm really looking forward, you know, to test those new cars. We have also good upgrades um, to, to come and to test. So it's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, this is what you miss about Formula One, you know, coming to Maggots Beckett is going to be awesome. And some might say this could be your home Grand Prix, because do you know that Silverstone is actually closer to your hometown of Evra than yeah. Paul Ricard? Yeah, that's very true, very true. Um, there's also Spa, which is near. So I don't know which one to choose from, but uh, yeah, I mean, the team is, uh, is also headquartered here in the, in the UK, so it is kind of a home Grand Prix for me. With what we're seeing at Red Bull and the gains Mercedes have made, do you think high-rate cars have hit the limit of development? Uh, good question. Uh, I am no aerodynamicist, but I would say that's that could be quite accurate. You know, I, I know for, well, from what I feel I, I knew and saw, you know, over those those years, especially of Red Bull's success, you know, in the, uh, let's say the, the Vettel and, and Weber days, um, it was all about, you know, they were pumping the, the rake higher and higher, it, it seemed. And then, uh, you know, now more more recently, Mercedes seem to have had more success with, with something that's less extreme. Um, so it looks like it's 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 going back to that. Um, so yeah, that looks the case. But do I 100% know the answer? I'm not going to lie and say I do. But uh, certainly from from the outside as well, it does look the case that it, it reached its its peak and and now it's trying to find uh, another way to go fast. <laughs> you said in the team's preview that there is a clear area in which the team needs to work. Can you elaborate on what you meant by that and what progress can be made to address it? Yeah, we've been, we've been on the phone you know, quite a lot with the team about um, you know, what's, what's the way of moving forward, um, where do we want to improve things. Um, we are having quite regularly chats you know, with Cyril, with Alain, with the guys, the engineers, uh, about on what, what to improve. I felt the first two races were 
a good improvement, um, but that we didn't, you know, improve enough on Budapest. And uh, um, this is why, you know, it's been very important to have a good chat to see where we, what we could do better. We had uh, also a technical debrief that was uh, very important for us on what to do uh, after that, that weekend. And uh, this is what we are going to try to achieve. We have some upgrades also this weekend that should help us um, on improving the performance of the car. So um, yeah, let's see what it does. But we are definitely on the right way. Thanks, Esteban. Uh, Daniel, another email question. This one for you. Your former race engineer, Simon Rennie, is back at the racetrack this weekend with Red Bull and Alex Albon. You had a great relationship with Simon. What are his strengths? What can Alex expect? Uh, yeah, <laughs> his strengths. <laughs> He's probably listening. He's <laughs> um, look, I, <laughs> one of his strengths is dealing with me, uh, putting up with my stuff, for sure. Um, but, you know, I, I think uh, a driver, race engineer relationship, first and foremost, you know, the, there needs to be a relationship. You, you need to get on with each other. You need to understand each other. And, you know, if Simon understood me and understood that I was at times different. Um, but uh, we had that, I think, that connection and that chemistry. And, uh, and that helped, you know, me also put my faith and trust in him, you know, and if, if we're... Uh, kind of torn between do we go this way or that way you know a lot of the time I'll give him my feeling but then leave it with him and, and say all right I trust you and I know that you're going to make the right call so whatever you choose I support you and uh, it can be as simple as that but I, I think uh, obviously he's I'm probably not doing him justice he obviously had a lot of experience and he's very good but um, it's just having that that real I think it's really just trust in each other and, and understanding what, uh, what you like, so, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, as far as Alex goes now with, with Simon, um, I'm sure that, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna go good. Um, yeah, we'll see, every, every driver is different, but I, I certainly had a very good few years with, with Simon, so if you're listening, Simon, yeah, you're all right. <laughs> Very complimentary. Let's uh, let's end this one just by talking about this weekend and how you guys think the car is going to go. Uh, Daniel, let's start with you. Yeah, uh, that's the question. That's it. Just how, how it's going to go. You don't write yeah. the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we do have a, a couple little few tickles, you know, with some barge boards and, and some aero stuff. So that's that's nice. Always around here. Um, I think, you know, last year it was a, it was a good Good track for us, good race, good quality. Um, and I feel, you know, we've we've had eight places every race this year. Um, and I actually felt like there's been more in it, you know. So I think this can be a circuit that we can find that. And uh, looking at Austria and Budapest last year, Silverstone was a, a better track for us. So I think uh, everything to be optimistic for. As, as a driver, it's it's high speed, you, you really feel what an F1 car is capable of around this track. You know, it's, it's like cops, you know, you can be flat out in seventh, eighth gear and it's, it's, it's serious, you know, it's, it's fun, it's real. Um, so it's a pleasure to drive, you know, it's a track that I don't think you'll ever really get sick of because um, every year the cars develop and it's faster and faster and more exciting. So um, looking forward to it, tomorrow's hot. So gonna sweat and enjoy that. Thanks, Daniel. Esteban, what are your goals this weekend? Yeah, well, the, the target is, is clearly to score some points, um, you know, this weekend, um, trying to analyze, you know, what's, what's the new things on the car and, um, and, yeah, get the most out of it, really. That's what I, I would say um, on the other stuff. I agree with Daniel, you know, it's, a, it's just a pure fun track to drive. Um, there's less and less corners, which uh, means the car are really going faster and faster every year, which is great. Um, I will never have experienced a track that hot tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is going to be extremely warm, so it's going to be a, a new experience for me. Um, and then, yeah, let's try to, to bring the car in the points this weekend. And if we do that, it's going to be a, a satisfying weekend. Thanks, gentlemen. That is all we have time for. And good luck this Thank weekend. You. Welcome back to the driver's press conference at Silverstone, where we're joined now by both Alpha Tauri drivers, Daniel Kafiet and Pierre Gasly. Guys, welcome. Good to see you. Um, 
It looked like a frustrating weekend in Hungary with various reliability issues. Have you, un have you identified what the problems were? What have Honda told you? Um, yeah, I must say I was quite disappointed to leave Budapest with only, I think, it was 30 laps or something also. Um, and yeah, I mean, we, we were quite unlucky. FP2 was wet. Uh, we had only no running in P1 and only three laps, I think, in P2. Um, quite short um, time to prepare for quali, and, and I think that's why the, the Q3 was a, a great achievement, um, considering everything that happened. And yeah, Honda identified all the problems. Um, what happened on Saturday was similar to what we had on Friday. Uh, unfortunately, it was yeah not really possible to, to spot it before. And um, yeah, unfortunately, on Saturday, with all these issues, we, we damaged a bit the gearbox, um, which uh, yeah, which broke um, during the during the race at the start of the race. So um, quite unfortunate, but at the same time, yeah, it's a motorsport. Um, you obviously wish that these things never happen, but uh, it does sometimes. And uh, I think we should be all set for this weekend. And I don't expect any um, any more reliability um, issues for the weekend. Thanks, Pierre. Danny, coming to you and staying with Hungary, actually. Um, can you explain what happened on the formation lap at the last race? Because it was reported that you requested to pit for slicks, but the team turned you down. Is that the case? And if it was, what might have been possible had you been able to change tyres? Yeah, well, it was a bit tricky situation. You know, on one hand, of course, it's easy to talk after the race what we should have done. But once you are in the race, in the process, it, it's it's difficult to make those decisions. You know, I think uh, points were possible for us yeah, if we if we have done what what I would was uh, asked the team to do for sure. But it's easy to say now we reviewed everything after the 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 race. We reviewed what uh, could have been done better and uh, and so on. And uh, yeah, it's difficult, but we learned a lot from this and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, in the future, if some situation, similar situation will happen, uh, we know. So it's 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 good, but uh, yeah, shame that uh, we just uh, missed a little like decision, maybe uh, bravery there uh, to to get us a very very good uh, race. All right, guys, let's push it forward to this weekend and your ex expectations for the British Grand Prix. Who do you think you're going to be fighting? Danny, let's start with you. In Silverstone, yeah. Um, um, yeah, well, I hope uh, we can find, you know, a good baseline now with the car uh, straight away. Um, yeah, this track, it has a bit of everything, you know, it's very long straights, uh, in a way, quite power limited. On the other hand, there are a lot of fast uh, speed sections as well, and a bit more, a bit slower corners. So you really need to find a good compromise here. Who we're going to be fighting, I hope uh, we can be closer a bit to, to the to the leading midfield group, who is now, I think, uh, McLaren, you know, Racing Point, and Renault, who are slightly ahead of us. And I hope we can uh, target them this weekend. I hope we can enter a bit the, the battle and, uh, and start, you know, uh, uh, getting mixed up with them. Thank you. Pierre? Yeah, pretty much the same comments to, to Daniel. Um, I think, yeah, uh, we really need to, to maximize the car we have to um, be in the fight with these guys. And uh, we know in, in more normal conditions, based on the last few weekends, they have slightly more pace than us. So now we're coming completely new track, different compounds, other compounds. Um, so op hopefully it can work a bit better with the, with the car we have. Um, but yeah, you get a bit of everything. You need to have power, especially now with this car. Turn one and turn nine is flat. So the, you are flat out for a, a, long, um, a long time over the lap. Um, and a lot of high-speed corners um, as well, so you need the downforce. So, um, yeah, as I say, we, we need to execute everything perfectly over the weekend to um, hope to fight for uh, with these guys, um, as Daniel mentioned. Question now about your time racing uh, for British teams in the junior formulas, um, Arden and Carlin. Um, what did you learn racing for British teams in the junior formulas? Um, Apart from swear words. Yeah. <laughs> well, I th think for me it was great to, to improve my, my English. And, uh, you know, I think French people, we are quite well known for our poor English um, and, and also our French accent. So I think 
Um, yeah, it was it was a great time for me to be there, and Aden was really successful at the time. Um, I worked with uh, Christian's family, um, and I saw Christian a couple of times already when I was there. So that was a, a successful season. We finished second in 3.5 for my my first my rookie year. Um, spent some time in uh, Banbury. Um, had a couple of fish and chips, which was probably my first one at the time, and that uh, no, was um, was good. But uh, yeah, very successful team. So um, yeah, I, I enjoyed my time and uh, developed uh, quite well as a driver. Thank you, Danny. You ask what I learned, uh, and this, uh, if you're in doubt, just wear like t-shirt, shorts, and flip flops, even if, it's, if it rains. <laughs> <laughs> no, on the series, no, the, I also I drove for Arden, like Pierre and uh, Caroline, Caroline Racing, so uh, like one of the tops of uh, British uh, junior uh, categories. And yeah, it was, was cool. Uh, can't remember. I was in Pembury once in Wales. It was very, very like a uh, faraway track and uh, it's middle of nowhere really. And we used to test like our Formula 3 car there and ships, you know, walking on the track uh, and quite, quite nice atmosphere. <laughs> Great memories. Gentlemen, that's all we've got time for now. Thank you very much and good luck this weekend. Thanks. Thanks. Welcome back to the driver's press conference here at Silverstone, where we're joined by Racing Point's Lance Stroll. Unfortunately, Chaco Perez has had an inconclusive COVID test result and he's currently isolating, awaiting the result of his retest. So we will just have Lance with us for this session. Welcome, Lance. Good to see you. Uh, so, Lance, throwing it forward to this weekend, how do you think you're going to go here at Sorry? Silverstone? How do you think you're going to go here at Silverstone? Yeah, I think it could be a good track for us. I mean, the car's been been pretty solid in the high-speed corners. Uh, here, there are a lot of high-speed corners, so I'm looking forward to it. Now, you had a great weekend in Hungary. Um, how much confidence does a performance like that, both in qualifying and the race, ahead of coming to this race? Um, yeah, I think we just got to keep keep our heads down, keep working hard. Uh, it's you know still early days, it's a long season ahead. So I mean the the goal this weekend is uh, yeah is to to bag some some more good points for the team. Do you expect to challenge Red Bull even closer here? I mean we were in front of them in Hungary on Saturday, and uh, in the race, like I said, there was some. Some mixed conditions that, you know, threw threw a few curveballs at us. But I was I'm pretty confident that in the race, uh, in a straightforward race in Hungary, um, we could have we could have uh, scooped the podium. So I think uh, all in all, we were we were definitely the the second fastest team in Hungary. And um, you know, uh, I hope we can uh, carry on uh, that momentum here. And Lance, can you just talk to us about the main differences uh, in handling between this year's car and last year's car? Because it was a difficult race for the team, uh, 2019 British Grand Prix. Uh, why do you expect it to be better this year? Well, downforce uh, is you know, a big, uh, big part of it. So when you got downforce, you got grip and that allows you to go around the corners faster, so it's kind of what it comes down to. And then, of course, there's, you know, always impro there's improvements we've made to uh, on the vehicle dynamic side of things, um, you know, and, uh, and, and, and there's, always, there's always improvements that are made from one year to the next, but I think ultimately um, this package, our aero package, is, is uh, much better than it was last year, and uh, that, that gives us a lot more uh, confidence as, as drivers to, to attack the corners and to, to lean on the car, which, uh, which is great. And, you know, uh, that, that just makes, uh, it makes a more competitive race car and makes it much uh, better to drive. And Lance, just talking about the corners here at Silverstone, can you describe the sensation of driving through Cops, Maggots, Beckett's, Stowe? Is it hard to retain your concentration while under such extreme physical duress? It's it's definitely the most thrilling combination of corners that we experience on the calendar. I think Suzuka kind of, uh, I, I would say Suzuka's probably in line with it, but 
Um, we don't experience that that sensation anywhere else on the calendar. It is where you feel a Formula One car um, come alive at its at its most, and um, you know, every time every time we go through there, it's it, the, the 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 loads and the g forces that we experience are incredible. It's it's really mind blowing. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, itching to get out there tomorrow. Well, I assume you've been on the simulator. Um, to give us a little insight, do you think Cops will be flat in eighth, eighth gear, Maggots, Beckets? How much are you going to be touching the brakes through that section? <laughs> I hope so. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's always dependent on wind direction as well, um, those corners. So when you get a, tail, when you get a tailwind through Cops and uh, Maggots and Beckets, it, it obviously slows it down a little bit. So that'll, uh, that'll, that'll come into play. But... Um, yeah, hopefully we have no issues and uh, it's flat for us. Okay. Now, do we have any questions uh, from the video conference? We don't have any questions. I think everyone's busy tapping away, Lance, uh, about news about your teammate. Um, I think on that note, I'm going to say good luck this weekend and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the driver's press conference here at Silverstone. And as you can see, we're joined now by Alfa Romeo's Kimi Raikkonen and Antonio Giovinazzi. I think on the race, we, we are there with, uh, with the midfield teams, with, you know, Alfa Tauri and uh, Haas and uh, a little bit stronger than Williams, but we are really close together. In qualifying, we struggled too much, what we saw also in, uh, in Ungaroring. Uh, and then, like Kimi said, you know, when you start from the back, then it's really difficult to recover, especially with overtakes, and especially in a track like Ungaroring. Uh, Spielberg was a little bit better because it was more uh, possibility to, to overtake. Uh, but yeah, we need to focus for sure on the, on the qualifying. Uh, we have some idea here, and uh, we will try to to see if his work, and I hope uh, we are going on the right way. Question to you, Kimi. He says, after Alfa Romeo qualified 19th and 20th in Hungary, you said the team isn't doing itself any favours in certain areas. Can you clarify what you meant by that? Is it things like strategy calls, positioning on track, or something else? No, I think we could ask uh, what comes also as a driver. We can do a better job, and we can tidy up things, and uh, if we... If we do everything as well as we can, for sure we can achieve uh, whatever the speed is the best that is possible in that moment. But I think uh, still as a, it comes as, as my driving and as, a, as the whole whole thing that we do over the whole race week. And I think there is uh, things that we can definitely improve and tidy up. And uh, you know we need to minimize those, and that will already help us to to get at least maximum whatever the, the maximum will be and every weekend than that. But, uh, you know, especially in our position, we cannot uh, accept uh, doing mistake from either part. It, it comes to drivers or, or, or the whole team and know how we run the whole race weekend. So I think on that area, definitely we can improve. But it's it's normal in uh, every team. It's, you know, it's never ending work to be try to improve on all the all the small smallest even details because in the end those will those will often dictate the whole end result. Welcome back to the drivers press conference and we're joined now as you can see by the Haas drivers, Kevin Magnussen and Roman Grosjean. Guys, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, all of the Ferrari powered cars are missing some straight line speed. How do you expect to go this weekend? Who are you going to be fighting? Your boss, Gunter Steiner, says this this race will bring no joy. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, certainly going to be a challenge on this track. It's a very um, <clears throat> straight line speed and, uh, you know, low drag sensitive uh, track. And also you still got, you know, quite a few uh, high speed corners uh, that requires downforce. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Um, where are we going to be? I don't know. You know, we'll see about that. Uh, we're going to try and get as high up as possible. I think we've uh, struggled more in qualifying than we have in, in the race, um, in, in those races that we've done. So that's, you know, we're getting to know the car a little bit better and uh, that's kind of what we've learned about it, is that it's actually a pretty, it's a decent race car for, for the pace we have. You know, we, we're clearly not, um, you know, the fastest car, uh, but, you know, we, we, can, we can sort of do better in the race than in qualifying. So, yeah, we'll, we'll try and get as high up as, as we can in qualifying and then, uh, you know, try and race. 
where is this car better than last year's car and where is it still lacking? Well, I think the car is clearly much better in the race. Um, last year's car was, was very, very strong in, you know, at, at very few occasions. Uh, so the peak of the car was extremely good. But then it was very, very uh, sensitive and it only worked in, you know, over one lap with new tyres and basically in qualifying. And in the race, you'd, you'd very, very quickly struggle on the tyres and you'd get problems and in traffic, you'd struggle massively and it, it, it just wasn't consistent. So that brilliant performance that you saw sometimes for the car only was there, you know, on a very few occasions. So uh, with this year's car, we've, we've kind of gone in a different direction towards, you know, more consistency and uh, a more drivable car. And we've certainly got that, but obviously the train, you know, has the, the whole competition uh, competitiveness of, of the other teams, they've improved. So and we have improved. This car, this year's car, isn't worse than last year's car. It's just that everyone is, uh, you know, get the, everyone get a lot better um, over the winter. So I think we've been successful in you know going the direction and actually making the car in the way that we we try to do it. Um, we just need to you know add more overall perf performance on the car in in the way that you know with the characteristics of that the car has already. Good afternoon, guys. Great to have you with us. George, let's start with you. It's Silverstone. It's your home race. Just how excited are you? And what's your favorite thing about racing at home? <laughs> Incredibly excited to be racing here at Silverstone. Obviously, an amazing track, one I've been looking forward to for a long time. Obviously, we've got a more competitive car versus last year, so that adds to the excitement. But obviously, with no fans here, um, it's a shame, and it's you have that real buzz last year when I was here of all the, the crowd and the grandstands and when you're driving into the tracks, which was incredible. Uh, so obviously we we're going to miss out on that this year, which, um, you know, it tones down the atmosphere a little bit, but nevertheless, super excited for Silverstone. And Nicholas, just coming to you, racing at Silverstone, you've had success here in the junior formulas yourself. Just your thoughts on the track and the place? Yeah, it's always been one of my favorite, well, it is my all-time favorite track probably on the calendar. Uh, yeah, really just a combination of the high-speed corners. I think it's really the perfect track to, to drive these high downforce cars, and it's, it's what I enjoy about them going through the high speed and kind of pushing them to the limit. So, yeah, very looking forward to, to driving these, you know, modern generation F1 cars on a track like this. Um, I mean, kind of a bit like what George said, you know, even though it's not, not my home race, for sure you will feel the absence of the fans as this is always a, a unique one for me that you know the motorsport fans are so passionate here so you always do feel you know a little bit of extra energy coming to, to this race so uh, yeah it'll be missed for sure but uh, yeah super excited for the weekend ahead i think um you know obviously one of the qualifying sessions so far this year was wet which obviously mixed things up a bit historically or you know last year hungary suited our car in qualifying and uh, it's one of my favorite circuits. I think this weekend it will be a good, another good reference to see where we are. I expect that Delta to, to come back towards us and to see it a little bit more like we saw in the Austrian Grand Prix. Thank you. Nicholas, your thoughts? Yeah, I think really uh, yeah, similar to what George said, uh, you know, there will be tracks that'll suit the car for sure better, just like with any other team. Um, yeah, Budapest, so not Budapest, yeah, Budapest we knew was, was probably going to be one of the better tracks for us going into the year so it was nice to see that we did capitalize on that and, and have quite a strong qualifying uh, across both cars uh, yeah coming into this weekend i think no doubt it, it will be a step forward from last year so that's that's for sure um but yeah i think we will uh you know see a bit more on, on general where the paces of the car uh and yeah as for the difference in qualifying to the race um yeah it's still a bit difficult to, to pinpoint that uh, yeah, we're still trying to trying to figure it out, have some ideas, but uh, yeah, still still working to close the gap to, to the race performance. Nicholas, staying with you, you had a collision with Carlos Sainz in the pit lane in Hungary. What changes, if any, have been implemented here to prevent a repeat? Um, I think, yeah, it was obviously a very busy pit lane, uh, everyone diving in for the slicks in, in Hungary, so just a bit unfortunate. Uh, I mean, I saw the green light, uh, so when the green light goes, you go, and you don't want to have any hesitations. So, yeah, uh, I think now, I mean, we're going to discuss it in a bit more detail, but I think just we will, we will have a little bit of a, uh, let's say, 
a fail safe with one of the engineers you know on the radio just in case something like that is to happen uh, you know we do have a procedure in place with uh, different light systems different light combinations to to warn me of traffic if there is traffic uh, but th there was a specific reason why I didn't go off so that's that's been addressed uh, but yeah we will implement another backup plan like I said with an engineer taking the radio just just in case my first experience of Silverstone was in 2009 I was stood on the outside of cops at the start on the banking and it was just you know such a buzz such a thrill listening to the cars go through the corner I remember very strongly a memory um, I think it was a Red Bull leading a brawn at the start and that was probably the moment in my career where I said you know what this is what I want to do when I get older because this is this is pretty damn cool so um, that's the moment that that sticks out in my memory Thanks, George. Just that same question to you, Nicholas. Can you remember your first visit to Silverstone? First visit, uh, I think it was probably in 2013. It was it was not for for a race. It was for an actual test day I, I was doing. Um, I think that that year I was doing uh, the European uh, Formula Three Championship with Carlin, and uh, the track was on the calendar. So we we came here just in a in a school car they had a really quite slow uh, low, low power low downforce car just to learn the track uh, so yeah not as <laughs> significant of a meeting to me comparing to George's first experience here but yeah it was definitely right away one of the tracks that uh, I liked quite uh, quite a lot straight away thanks Nick let's go to the zoom call now and to Craig Slater please Thank you. Yes, Craig Slater, Sky Sports News. It's a question for George. George, you made some comments about the challenges of potentially racing in the other car to Lewis Hamilton. I wonder if there is an extra difficulty while Lewis is still going for record equaling championship seven and record breaking championship number eight and whether once he's climbed that mountain, might he be rather easier to race against? I think for any driver, when you're in the same surroundings for so long, you gain the experience how to uh, work with your engineers, how to understand one another, to progress the car further forward. Um, you're just in a, in a familiar environment. Even simple things like being comfortable in the car. You know, for me, when I first jumped into the Williams, you know, the seat wasn't perfect and it took me half a year to, to just get everything nailed down and you know I feel much closer with everybody in the team and I think for anybody going up against a guy who has you know had the same surroundings for so long um, you know they're just on a in such a good groove in such a good rhythm and I think um, that's why it'd make it that would would make it quite difficult to, to go against. But I don't think it would change that he's going for, for eight or not, I think, um, or seven, whatever it may be. I think as a driver, you're always, you want to go out and be as fast as you can. George, are you impressed by Lewis's longevity? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, he hasn't seemed to, to get slower as the years have gone by. If anything, he's, he's been getting quicker and quicker. I think his, his race pace is particularly impressive. Um, and I think it goes back to the fact that I mentioned, you know, so long in the same environment, same team, understanding the tyres with the same tyre engineers, your same performance engineer, and just that working relationship really helps. And, you know, I'm, I'm finding that in my second year now, um, having a good relationship with my guys, and I'm sure that will only grow stronger the longer we work together. Given the strong qualifying result in Hungary, do you think finishing inside the top 10 is realistic for Williams this year? Nicholas, let's start with you. I think it definitely has to be the goal and, and the aim. Um, I mean, if we can continue to, you know, on uh, every now and then get into Q2 and, you know, like George showed was, was uh, very close to being on the cusp of getting into Q3. Uh, if we can continue that rhythm and, and that trend in qualifying, uh, then that obviously puts us you know, much closer to the, to the points. And uh, I think for sure, if it was to happen, we'd probably still have to rely on some things falling into place for us. Um, but to be fair, I think most of the midfield teams in, in our position, that there's always 
something like that that's going to happen if you are going to get into the points. Obviously, we saw with the horses, uh, you know, off, off pure pace, they were slipping back after those first few laps, but, you know, they they, they made a bold call and, and something went in their in their favor quite a bit. So, um, yeah, we, we definitely want to be challenging for the points. Um, but, yeah, it'll, we under no illusion that it will be difficult still. Thank you. And George, top 10? Yeah, as Nicholas said, we've definitely got to aim for that. But realistically, it's going to be quite tough on pure pace. We're going to have to capitalize on other people's errors. You know, we've already seen a quite crazy race in the first race of the season. Um, all we can do is just continue to do the best job we can on a Saturday and be ready on a Sunday to pounce. And, you know, we always see it every year. There's always one or two crazy races out there, and we need to make sure we're on top of it when, uh, when that one comes, comes our way. Thanks, George. Do we have any more questions on the video conference? If we don't, I'm going to say thank you very much, gentlemen, and good luck this weekend. Cheers. Thank you.